Next, uh, Dr. Polsky. These might start winding down. Oh, I hope so. And uh, I check with Andrew. He's vaccinated. I am vaccinated. I'm taking my mask off. Mm. Mm. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, I, I just can't help to point out you were gone for two weeks, and now all of a sudden <laughs> mask <laughs> restrictions are gone. The whole states, I mean. It, 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 things turned upside <laughs> were down. Were you working on a secret uh, potion somewhere? <laughs> I was thinking, why are you going to go away sooner? <laughs> <laughs> We should have sent him away six months ago. <laughs> you're you're welcome to send it him It would be completely done. <laughs> I wouldn't argue at this point. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and now 12-year-olds can get vaccinated, which was not the case when I left the previous week. So a whole lot has changed uh, in the past few. Um, so just to update a little bit, the number of cases in the county continued to gradually decrease. This past week, uh, 85 cases, a positivity rate overall of 4.2%. Positivity rate for those between ages 20 and 55, so pretty broad band there, uh, are still a bit over 5%. Uh, happy to see that in children and adolescents that the rates are declining, so those are down 3 to 4%, depending on which age range you look at. And I was happiest to see that in people 75 and over, their positivity rate was, uh, was less than 1%. And again, that really shows how effective vaccines have been uh, because, and, and there's the, the breakdown by ages, I should have put that up there before, uh, because what that really shows is, is that uh, the vaccine, the, the group that has been vaccinated uh, most heavily uh, have been seniors, and we've seen the greatest reduction in, in, uh, in cases. So again, there's the numbers. We're still seeing about 2,000 people per week in the county getting tested, which is nice to see that uh, vigilance in that respect, both among individuals and among healthcare providers, is staying high. They realize this is still a problem. Uh, this past week, uh, there we go. Doc, have you seen the home testing kits are advertised on TV? Yeah, uh, and so good and bad with that. It, if it makes it easier for people to get tested, I'm certainly not opposed. <coughs> the me. problem we have with that is that there's really no practical way to do contact tracing. And, uh, but I mean, like, say the person that's nervous about, say, going to visit somebody mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, do those tests proven pretty effective? The, the, they are pretty accurate. And uh, like with uh, all of the rapid tests, for people who are asymptomatic, they don't have any cough, they don't have any fever, the sensitivity is not as good. Uh, and that doesn't matter if you have those rapid tests done in a doctor's office or you have it done at home. Uh, the PCR is still more accurate, more sensitive for people who are not symptomatic. And, and so people need, still need to keep in mind that vaccination by far is the best way not only to protect yourself, but to protect others. Because the reason people are doing that is so that they don't spread to others. They feel fine. You know, in most cases, maybe they're visiting their grandmother or whoever they're gonna visit. They wanna make sure they're not passing on to somebody else. But if they are an asymptomatic carrier, the sensitivity is not great. In some cases, sensitivity is below 50% with those tests. And so by, by far, uh, the best way is to just go out and get yourself vaccinated. Uh, and this way, that you know, the probability of passing on to somebody else is extraordinarily low. Yeah. Uh, so, again, this pandemic is not behind us. Uh, this, from the week that I put stats up there, uh, which is pretty recent, I, I put the numbers together a couple days ago, uh, still 77 deaths across the state. And I put a comparison. So if you would annualize that, if 77 people died each week throughout a whole year, it's a little bit over 4,000 deaths in a year. If you add up all the deaths from colon cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer, it's only about half of the number of deaths that we are currently seeing, not when things were even worse a few months ago, but currently seeing. So this is still a major public health problem. Uh, almost 700 people hospitalized across the state, about 200 in ICUs right now. So again, complacency is not a great way to go about things at the moment. So getting back to the face mask changes, uh, this is where face masks are still required, uh, which uh, I broke it down into children and then kind of general. So daycares, all school buildings, including school buses, and when youth camps are indoors. So outdoor youth camp activities, no masks required, but any indoor activities, yes. And pretty obvious reason why that anyone under 12 
uh, at this point can't get vaccinated even if their parents want them to. And there's still very, very uh, small percentage of those 12 and older at this point who have even gotten a first dose, much less completed their vaccinations. My hope is going into next school year that we'll see changes where uh, at least 12 and over, so middle schools and high schools, that hopefully the, the vast majority of students have gotten vaccinated at that point. And then it's a wait and see as far as elementary level. The right, uh, right side uh, of the slide is general. So healthcare facilities, still a requirement. Licensed medical adult daycare centers, which I don't think we have any in our county, but it does bring up the question of what is good policy for senior centers uh, and so uh, Susan Justice, who heads Office of Aging, and I had a, a little back and forth yesterday. Um, one thing that I think has frustrated me more than anything else is this knee jerk, we got to do it today. Uh, you know, we're almost a year and a half into this. Some thoughtful policy, giving people a heads up, allowing people to make decisions uh, and adjusting to changes in policy, I think would be a wonderful idea instead of, all right, Here's what the sign shows today. We're gonna to change policy tomorrow. Uh, and so for the health department, uh, we don't know what the governor will decide tomorrow. Certainly we are a healthcare facility, but that mandate for masks go away tomorrow for all I know. Um, so I've put out a directive that in all of our four facilities, that face masks are still required in public areas at least through the middle of June. And that gives anyone who at this point has for various reasons decided not to get vaccinated. It gives them a chance over this next week or two to get their initial vaccination. We know that regardless of the vaccine, whether it's Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, or Moderna, within two to three weeks after that first dose that people have at least 70% protection. And with the Pfizer and Moderna booster, then they're up to 95%. Doctor, can you pause right there for a sure. moment? What about public transportation? Public transportation serving mostly mm -hmm. the underserved. Correct. And is that group the more vulnerable in general? And in, should, should mass still apply? In general, yes. And I'm sorry, I, I was going to get to the last bullet point. So thank you for prompting me uh, that on all public transportation, so that includes all buses, and so school buses, but also general but our STS buses in the area. And for people who are traveling out of the area, trains and airplanes are still required there. Uh, but yes, for the moment, but again, we don't know what the governor may or may not decide tomorrow or next week. Uh, and so for school buses, our policy there has been to, and I think on the STS buses as well, to try to lower the windows a little bit, as long as weather's permitting to allow a little more air circulation, uh, but still for people to wear their masks. And again, our hope is that uh, each and every one will go ahead and get themselves vaccinated with shortly. Well, thank um, you for the public transportation clarification, because I think that's more likely where we run into problems with people objecting or not objecting or not being prepared. So and, the most that we can get out, the better we are. And, and I think you know, a more measured uh, approach to giving people a heads up, because there are people who society has protected a lot of people up to this point with mandated masks, with social distancing, um, and those protections are going away. And each person will need to take responsibility for his or her own health as well as the health of their family. So I think instead of this you know, rush to, we have to do this tomorrow, giving people about a month heads up about change in policy um, gives people a chance to make good decisions for themselves and for their family members. And we need to keep in mind that again, for everyone under 12, they're not able, and there are 2% of all hospitalizations across the country have been children. Uh, and I think there's this uh, myth out there that, uh, that kids are not impacted by COVID. Uh, certainly the risks are lower, but again, 2% of all hospitalizations, and there have been a lot of hospitalizations across the country, 2% have been children. And there are a lot of children under 12 who have chronic health conditions, um, so they will remain unprotected and for adults, uh, for people getting chemotherapy, for other types of treatment that significantly suppress their immune system, regardless of what they want to do, uh, their immune system, vaccine or not, are not going to protect them adequately. So we all still have a collective responsibility uh, to watch out for our neighbors. The big number slide. Uh, so the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that in Calvert, uh, only about 38% of the total population are fully vaccinated at this point. If we take a look at adults between 18 and 65, 
Uh, about 50% have gotten their first dose, but that means half the population under 65 has not even gotten a first dose. And again, for those under 18, the numbers are very small. Uh, that, puts us, uh, I'm sorry, that puts us in the middle of the pack for the state as far as overall adult vaccination. So, Dr. Polsky, yep. do you know last week how many first dose vaccinations you all did? I'm sorry, I don't have that number with me. I, I can get that. Uh, and, and what we look at is not just what we as a health department have done, but collectively so for the residents across the state, whether they went to a local pharmacy, um, there are quite a few primary care offices that are now providing vaccines, although in limited numbers. Um, and then there's a small number who's still going out of county. So I, I can I can get those numbers for next week. Is it OK? For yeah. Me to have yeah. All right. So this morning on the radio, the Charles County Health Officer was on doing an interview, and she was concerned about the low rate of vaccinations for children. But didn't we just open up to children about a week ago? And and so and I want to clarify terms, not not to nitpick. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those adolescents, twelve to fifteen, right, that just got approved last week, mm -hmm. and and we did on Friday. Uh, so I'll take a half a step back. For the 16 to 18 year olds, when that got approved, and that was only, I think, three weeks ago, uh, we work with the local school system, um, the private schools, we work with them as well. But the local school systems, because of the numbers, and, and only Calverton has 16 to 18 year olds, and it's a small number. So the pri for, for the public schools, uh, we work with the school system, the school nurses set up clinics in the high schools so that for parents who, because of transportation issues, because of work schedules, who it would be difficult, all they needed to do was sign a permission slip and their children were able to get vaccinated in the high schools. Because of the timing now at the end of the school year and the second dose is three weeks after and every other week and all that kind of stuff, uh, the schools felt that there it just wasn't uh, feasible to do the in-schools for the 12 to 15 year olds. So we worked out with them very quickly to push uh, registration links out to parents, and um, I had the numbers, and I'm sorry, I, um, so I'm ballparking. Uh, the 12 to 15-year-olds on Friday, I think we provided about 250 vaccinations at the drive through And what we're looking at right now is we have a mobile van through the health department to take that out to the middle schools, at least to do a first dose, and then figure out what will be best for the second dose, which might be going out to the same location, or making other arrangements for parents to be able to get their children in. Under 12, again, uh, there's not an option for vaccinating at this point. So didn't a bill pass in the legislature this year that said school children can get treated without parental permission? No. It did not. Not, not for COVID. No, no, no. Just in general. At a child in no, school. No, no, oh, oh I, I, I know what you're talking about. You should, because so, you testified. Uh, so this is specifically for... So what for, did that cover? Specifically for mental health care. That's only mental health. Only mental it's health care. It's not for medical care, right. Correct. So we won't I, be able to vaccinate kids without parents knowing. Correct. Okay. That's what I was checking. For. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah parental permission is, is required. Um, and then uh, for 65 and over, we're still second highest in the state as far as a percentage of our seniors. So 88.1% um, I think was the latest as far as at least the first dose and 81% of all the seniors in the county have completed their vaccinations at this point. Uh, and then an update as to where uh, people who live in the county are getting their vaccines. And uh, CHMC is the hospital group. And then a reminder to where people can go uh, for vaccination and uh, updated. So the vaccines given out through our health department, essentially 90% of those have gone to Calvert residents. And then uh, where people can register at this point. And uh, at this stage, if somebody registers, they can pretty much go. Same day. To the next, yeah, whenever right. you have it. So we have links up. up for today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and into next week. This Thursday and next Tuesday, we have hours till 7 p.m. And we also have hours this Saturday. So for people who work standard roughly 8 to 4, 9 to 5, uh, they still have opportunities during um, weekday evenings and on weekend for themselves or for their adolescent children to come in and get vaccinated. And you have Moderna and Pfizer? 
We have, we have both. Uh, we do have a few doses of Johnson & Johnson in the refrigerator. We do have a few people who specifically want a one dose. And I think that for men of any age and for women over 50, the Johnson & Johnson is a perfectly reasonable choice. If I was somebody's personal physician and it was a woman under 50, then I would recommend either the Moderna or the Pfizer. The, as we talked about a few weeks ago, the number of blood clots is not dramatic. Uh, but about one in a hundred thousand. It's just I don't see the need to take that risk when we have other options uh, that are um, have proven. There's now been 150 million doses of Pfizer administered in the U.S. alone, and 116 million doses of Moderna administered. We've not seen any blood clots. We've not seen really any. Uh, significant health issues other than people get a sore arm after the first shot and usually feel kind of fatigued after the second shot. Uh, any All other right. questions? questions? No. Thank you, Dr. Great. Folsom. All right, thank, thank you, you all. You. Thank Dr. You. Folsom did a great job filling in for you the last two weeks. And uh, I heard you were very gracious. So. It's, it's, <laughs> we, encouraged, <laughs> we encouraged her to come back. But she... Um, she was appreciative for her time, and she, she seemed to be uh, perfectly happy to turn things back. Really? Around, but we, if, we if, I, if I was, parking spot, yeah, yeah, exactly. if I was you, I wouldn't go away no more for uh, a while. Um, well, uh, <laughs> at this point, I'm, I'm telling you, you want to get rid of me, get rid of me. Um, <laughs> remember I'm, I'm still the drummer for the Beatles? <laughs> remember the drummer for the Beatles? Remember what happened? <laughs> That's right. Was it Peter Best? Pete Best, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, while we're on the subject of COVID, as most of you know, last week at the end of the week, the governor was having press conferences and rapid fire success in changing the rules. So uh, we are trying to get the county back up and running as best we can, according to the rules that the governor has laid out. Uh, I, as I always say, uh, this courthouse is not under air control and it is under the control of the chief magistrate judge in Baltimore. And she has yet to relieve us of the restrictions. So um, until that time, we still cannot allow the public in our meetings here. So uh, but we are I can assure you staff is working hard to try to get some uh, leniency in those rules because uh, we do enjoy seeing a full room of people when we're here. It's, it's not much fun when it's just the five of us sitting here by ourselves. So, uh, oh, well, but uh, just wanted to relay that information. Um, I will say that for any of you that are trying to come back for a county service because of uh, the construction plan for the new administration building, county offices have moved. So you need to check before you come, uh, call here at the courthouse, uh, find out where you need to go because as I said, there's nothing left in the administration building over where the plaza is So um, I don't want you driving around Prince Rodrick lost uh, Staff will try to direct you to where your offices are so you can uh, do your business as need um, So just wanted to put that out there. We are trying to get back up in Norman as you see it looks a little normal up here today We are very happy to get rid of the glass shields and the mass. So uh, it's, it's progress and uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train coming, so.